Why are you guys so quiet? <laughs> Nothing to talk about, really. What's wrong, Maverick? You were put to be too tight, but it is rather than a bit tight. Then I keep cutting it in harder and harder. I <laughs> keep putting it back. Oh. Is it breaking? Yeah. Oh. We have to sharpen it. Yeah. Okay. Up on me. Help you? Okay. Mm. You want to hold this? Mm. Ooh, that's good. Mm. Here you go. So what are you drawing, Maverick? What is it? Yes. <clears throat> I don't know. What is it? A ship? Yeah. Why is it doing that? You can see. It puts to be like that. Oh. Well, you keep working on it. Make something really cool. You want to make a robot? Well, for ya, this is a robot home. Ah, oh, it broke again. Not ship now. Now well, you have to get a new pencil. That one keeps breaking. Yeah. Hey, Belle, I'm in here for some new art to share. Hmm. Well. How about the, um, the blue jay? Hmm. Belle recently drew a blue jay, and I thought this one would be fun to share because it was done in a different medium than usual. It wasn't the colored pencil like the uh, dragon art. You did this one with marker, right? Yeah. Here, set it down and I'll get a nice still shot of it. There's an owl one. Hold on. Pretty cool, though. Yeah. I was happy with it. Yeah. What do you have to share, Ash? I have nothing to share. Come on, can't you feel a little more positive here? No. Can I just tell you guys how much I love the light that comes in this barn with these uh, polycarbonate gable ends? You can see up here, the clear. It is beautiful in here. It's hard to tell with the camera. Because when the camera is in a dark spot, it tries to brighten it up so you can see. When it's in a bright spot, it tries to darken it. You never get a good view through the lens of the camera. But in real life, I've just been loving coming in here and having this light. The barn always stays a little messy. I don't know why, we just can't manage it. But it's coming together, it's getting better. One of the things I wanna work on today is getting drawer poles put on the cabinets over here. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but I know that when Things are difficult to, to use, they're like less likely to be used. For example, when these drawers are difficult to open, because it's a sink base, when these drawers are difficult to open, I'm less likely to open them to put stuff back away because it's a hassle. When I'm in a hurry, when I'm working, I just like stuff quick and easy. So, this is what happens, clutter. You throw it on top instead of in the bottom. I have to get handles on here. So I went on Amazon and basically looked for the cheapest handles I could find. It's a barn, I don't want to spend a lot of money. And I found these little three inch handles. They have a three inch hole center on the back. And they're not very big, but they're gonna work for the barn. And what I liked about them is they were inexpensive and they were smooth. There's nothing to catch your pants or clothes on when you're walking around the, t the bench here. So that's what I chose. and I think they're gonna look good. I gotta drill holes for these, so let me put together a quick jig to help me drill my hole straight. So I'm just grabbing some scrap wood that's laying around. First thing I'm gonna do is just cut these ends flush just to clean it up. And now I'm gonna cut this to length. 
So I basically have a one by four and a one by two. Okay, and now on the one by four, what I'm gonna do is just make a line kind of in the center. It's not center, it's just close to center. That doesn't matter. I wanna come down two inches for my cabinet handle placement. Let me just connect those lines. I'll show you guys why I'm choosing two inches in a minute. Okay. And my handles are three inches apart, the, the holes, so I'm going to go an inch and a half over from either side. Looks good. Find a drill bit that will make a hole a little bit about the size of my... Uh... I'm just going to experiment with this drill bit to see how that feels. That's probably going to be good. It's got a little wiggle room, that way we don't have to be perfect. Because if it's too tight, and you drill your holes a tiny bit off, you're gonna struggle to get the screws in. So 3 16 drill bit is looking good. And now, I happen to have a drill block, and it's just a basically a little tool to use in place of a drill press to make straight holes. And I'm gonna use that. I don't need to, but I want my holes to be as straight as possible. And these metal collars right here will hold the drill bit dead straight. It can't wiggle in there as I'm drilling through. Let me cross these so I can see them better. So on the drill block there's uh, little grooves on the sides and there's grooves next to each hole so you can line it up pretty straight. I'm just testing the handle for fit. It looks like it fits. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I mean, I can screw it in. So now, from the top, I'm just gonna cap it with my one by two. All right. So now we're getting somewhere. I just want to carry this line, the center line, that's the important line. Carry it up. Carry it over. Carry it back. So I brought my center line right around the back lip here. That's important. Now we're ready to start. So basically, we're going to take the drawer and we're going to find the center of the drawer right on the back. So this is 11 and a half inches wide. So we're going to go five and three quarters. It's somewhere close to there. It's not a perfect dimension. So I got a little mark on the center on the back. And all I got to do is take my jig and line it up with that line. We'll click it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. And now we basically created our own little drill block. It's going to hold the drill bit somewhat straight. It sits on the drawer so every drawer will be consistently two inches down from a handle and centered on the drawer just finding that center mark. It's so easy. Perfect. And now let's test one out before we do any more. Oh, so nice to have a drawer pull on there. Now the reason I'm going two inches is totally just personal preference. I really looked at it and I didn't like how it looked in the center of the drawer, especially on the big drawers that we have on some of the other parts. I kind of like it high in the drawer. It gives it that kind of shop drawer feel, I think. So I like it.
Now I'll give you a tip though, when you're drilling through your cabinets, if it starts feeling hard, if the drill stops, don't force it, pull it out and let the shavings come out. It'll get bound up with shavings, so just clean it. Like that, let them fall out. And you'd be less likely to blow out the back of the cabinet door and have that wood splinter. You don't want to force the drill bit through, just let it, let it do it. Let it do its own work. All right, got my drawer pulls done on this side. And this side. Looking really good. I'm gonna be skipping all these because these are just fake. These were sink bases, so there's no drawers. But now we're gonna do cabinet doors, door handles. I can't use the same old jig because this could be a little bit different placement. So let's make a new jig. I'll show you my door jig. So the first thing I did was just to get an idea of where I want my doors to be. And I think I have a pretty good idea. So we're gonna take another one by four and we're gonna come down an uh, inch and a half. All right, now let me show you something so it can make sense is I measured this. It's two and three quarter inches wide. What I wanna do is rip this to the same exact width of this. So now it's the same width as these and all my cabinets are the same. So it's gonna be easy for us. And then I marked the center of that. I want my handles to be centered in that area. I just think it looks good. So I'm gonna put them about here. Does that make sense? Yep. All we have to do is get a little piece of one by two. Before I attach it, let's get this set up. We're gonna drill these holes just the same. Line up my drill block. And I'll just screw this on with, oops, with one screw. And now this one is pretty easy, even more easy than the other ones because all you have to do is center it. Remember, it's the same width as this board right here. So we, all we have to do is center it on there. You know what I did? Look at this. I drilled my screw right into the hole. Perfect, clean holes. The back is really good, very minimal blowout. It's always a good idea just to test your first one to make sure everything works the way it should. There we go. Kevin, it's so dirty. Worked good, I think it looks good. Now, as you can see, we can go straight from one door to the other using the same jig. Works just as fine because it's consistent. Now you might have noticed that I did put a line on the top of here like I did the other one. I don't know why I did that. It was just kind of not thinking and habit. I don't know, I just put a line there. You don't need a line. All you gotta do is set it on there, center it up. So this jig is actually easier and quicker than the first one doing doors. These are the slow, tedious jobs that you put off and put off because you don't feel like doing them. Perfect, perfect, I love it. That looks awesome, it's gonna be so functional. Quick and easy, we got it done. So I think that covers it all pretty well. I got two handy, quick jigs to make perfect drawer pulls every time. Now these aren't long-term use. The holes do get worn out and kind of worn away as you drill, but it got us through this job and that's what matters. Now I got one more tip, one more that I think I wanna share and it might help somebody. These handles came with two different size screws, a one inch and whatever this is, pretty long. And now these are good for different size, standard size drawers, but every once in a while you might run into like a situation where one is too long, one is too short, maybe it's not long enough, too long, whatever. Okay, 
I'm gonna show you guys the one tool that you need to have. Everybody needs this tool. This is just a simple electrical wire stripping tool. These wire strippers are pretty inexpensive and they're so handy to have around. They have a cutter, they have wire strippers, they have a plier end, you can use them as like light duty pliers. But also another feature, they, you'll see right here two holes, one of them says 632, the other one says 832. And this is an 832 thread screw. And you can screw it right in there. It threads right into the pliers. You want to screw it into the side with the threading. The back side, it doesn't have threading, it's just a hole, so it's loose. So you, you screw it into the front where it says 832. And you just line it up, you have to squeeze it a little so that it goes through the back like that. And then you can shorten your screw up, you just screw it into wherever you want, and when you got it there, just squeeze. Like that. And it cuts the screw, and then when you unscrew it, you got a perfectly cut, threaded, screw it and you can shorten up your screws so that you can fit uh, to a custom size depth cabinet if you don't like I said if your screw is too long and it won't tighten down you can trim them up like that so these tools definitely handy to have for more than electrical work so a lot of people don't know you can do that just cut screws now we have no new progress on the small room, but we got some good ideas coming. So hopefully we can get working on that a little at a time, as money and time permits. All right guys, it's getting late and it's super cold out. So we're gonna make this quick, but I just wanted to show you that we went to the store and picked up this. This is sheets of Foamular High Performance XPS Insulation, Insulation. <laughs> Insulate. How do you say that? Insulation. Insulation. Wow. <laughs> Insulate. <laughs> Insulation. This is an inch and a half thick, and I'm going to be using it on the ceiling in that little barn room that we're going to be restoring, renovating. I decided I do want to insulate it a little bit. This is a seven and a half R value. It's not a ton, but I think being a sheet insulation is going to be pretty uh, efficient and it'll be better than nothing. Yeah. We won't be heating it all winter, but it might be a good space for temporary heating. So a little insulation is probably better than none. If you think that's wrong, change my mind. Let me know in the comments. But that's my thought right now is making a shell of inch and a half foam insulation around the whole room starting with the roof. So that's the progress for today. I didn't really get anything else done. We got the cabinet door, uh, door handles done. That came out really good. Which is awesome, because those are really hard to open without handles. Yeah, and now I can clean a little easier. I, I, I don't know, I get lazy about stuff. Like I was saying earlier, if it's hard to do something, I don't do it. I throw it on the counter instead of the drawer. So I'm hoping that I can tackle that counter space and make it look nice again. Um, one thing I also wanted to point out was my new tape measure. This is pretty exciting for me. Most people don't get excited about tape measures. <laughs> but let me show you what I've been using. This is the one I have been using for a long time. It's... Years. Now I get these at home, or Menards. Mm -hmm. They're affordable, they're nice. And the thing I love about them is they self-lock and they, they suck in when you push the button. We like that way better than the standard kind. I cannot stand when a tape measure is always pulling in and you have to lock it and unlock yeah. it. Yeah. This is so nice. It's like when you pull it out, you want it to stay out. Yeah. So that just seems like the better way. This has been my go-to tape measure for many, many years. Long time. The only tape measure I buy. In fact, I have another one over there. I probably have four of them or more right now, just in various places. Yeah. I love these. But I think I'm converting over to this one. This is my brand new tape measure. And- Same brand, right? It's, it's, I think it's made by the same company. This one is like the Home Depot Performance. Or why do I keep saying that? The Menards cheap stuff. But yeah. anyway, it's a very similar tape measure and I'm comparing the 16 foot to the 16 footer. 
And this one is smaller, but a little fatter, but it's barely noticeable, but I like that it's small. And hold that. Has my same self-locking mechanism that I really love. Same exact thing. What makes this one really cool is that it has standard imperial. What is it called? Imperial? Different words, yeah. English. It has inches and metric. We're doing YouTube videos and we know inches. <laughs> We're Americans, that's our thing. And a lot of you guys aren't Americans. So you don't know inches, you have the centimeters and I don't know how to convert them. And I thought this would be fun because it would be easy for me to kind of see the relationship between inches and, and metric. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what it's called. It's our measurement. I don't know what to call it. Imperial or standard. <laughs> Stand I don't know. <laughs> um, I think it might be English. English? Whatever that's what they call it in Bell's school. Whatever this is called, that's our measurements. So I like that. I, I was searching out a tape measure that had inches and metric. I might even use metric sometimes. It'll be kind of handy to have that ability to use metric because metric is easy at times. Now, the other thing that I thought was really cool about this is check this out. This is the tape measure and look at the back side. Measurements on the back. So that's pretty crazy. And look at this on the end. It's actually got a dual hook on the top and bottom. So you can use this tape measure upside down. And this seems weird, but sometimes I'll be measuring in an odd spot. Like say I wanna like grab onto something that's up here, like um, the top of something, and I can't see it. You have to turn it like around. Like this. Yeah. You know, whatever. You get my point. Is Sometimes you can't see and it's bending, it's flopping. You try to hook it like this so you can see your measurement and it keeps falling off. Mm -hmm. You're like, wait, I can't see. Oh, you know, like that. Anyway, bad infomercial. This is, <laughs> <laughs> the point is you can hook it either way, but you can see it either way. I think that's really awesome. Yeah. So I'm not trying to sell it, but we probably will put a link below because you guys are gonna wanna see that anyway. But, um, so yeah, we'll put a link below. But I just wanted to show it off because I think it's awesome. I'm excited. And yeah. it's like... You got two of those, didn't you? Yellow and black. I did. I bought two of these. Yeah, so it's, it's not sponsor or anything. I bought two of them off Amazon. We're going to try to do some metric. And I just think that's a cool tape measure. It has every feature I love. I always wonder why our country hasn't converted to metric yet. Yeah. <laughs> we're still doing Fahrenheit and we're still doing... We like to be different. Yeah. The thing I will say about our standard of measurement, and I don't know if it works the same way in metric or at all, but is all the fractions, like when we're doing like four and three quarters or two and five eighths and all these numbers, it sounds confusing, but it really helps your mind because I know a lot of fractions and I know how to add fractions and all that stuff. And I think that's kind of, that's kind of cool sometimes. Like if somebody, you know, you want to know half of three quarters is three eighths, you know, it's just, it's quick in your mind. Yeah. So, I don't know, extra math. Whew, cold out here. <laughs> I'll try to put links to everything that we did. I'll try to put links to the cabinet handles that we used and anything I can think of. I think that was it, just simple things. People always ask what we mm -hmm. are using and, and have. When you guys shop through our Amazon links, we can earn a commission from that. It, help us. it helps us, so we earn a little money. So don't- and it doesn't cost you extra. It's no. just going through the link. Yeah, so don't see it as a sales pitch, just if you like it and you wanna buy it, it, you know, it is what it is. One more story before we go. This was really cool. We were at Home Depot picking these up, these uh, foam sheets and some other things for the house that we're working on. And this is so weird. I went back, I'm looking for an exterior door. So I went back to the door department. We know the guy that works there. And I, I saw him, so I said, hi, he was helping two customers. And I just said, oh, we were just looking around to see if you guys had any doors marked down. And they, they didn't. But then those two customers, they looked and they said, I know you guys or something like that. Yeah. And they said that we, they watch us on YouTube. They said, we watch you all the time. And totally caught us off guard. Yeah. <laughs> totally. We were not expecting it. 
And it, it was so awkward because when you're caught off guard, you know how you don't know what to say. Yeah. But it was really cool to, to run into people who watch our channel. That doesn't happen often. I think it's only happened once or twice before in the past. And it was at Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> The people who watch our channel shop at the home improvement stores. And yeah. Things. That's where we find people. That was really cool. They had no idea we lived nearby and... They thought we lived somewhere else in Michigan. Yeah. And so that was really fun. Um, it was cool. They said that, you know, we inspired them to get some work done and they were there picking up some stuff. And mm -hmm. that was cool. And... I kind of panicked a little. I started getting hot, you know, because <laughs> we're like shy people in real life. Even though we do YouTube, and you guys might not know this, but we're really shy. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm caught off guard, I start to like, I blush. I get like hot feeling. I'm like panicking. We don't really know what to say. Yeah, it's like awkward because I just get, I don't know why. I get this anxiety or something and I just kind of panic. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying not to be rude or anything. I'm, and we're not. We're totally excited. We're happy about it. Yeah. But then you think, oh no, my face is turning red. <laughs> and then you think everybody's wondering why your turn face is turning red. <laughs> so you just want to get out of there. You're just trying to leave like, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if that ever happens to anybody, like we're not trying to be rude or anything. We're just weird and yeah. shy. We're not trying to get away from you. We're just panicking. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's just the, the life of a shy person is kind of being socially awkward like that. Yeah. But that was really fun, really cool to run into people who watch our channel. And when we left, we heard them telling the guy like about our channel and that was kind of neat. He looked so confused, like, yeah. cause the door guy has no idea about our channel. Yeah, we don't talk to the people that work there. Like we don't go around saying, hey, we have a YouTube channel. So yeah. it's, <laughs> it was news to him, but that's fine. So that was just a little short, cool story that we wanted to share that just happened tonight. Uh, I don't know if you two were watching, but it was really cool to meet you and sorry we wouldn't stick around. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I guess that's it. We're freezing, we're shivering. It's getting so cold here. It's probably in the upper 30s, mm -hmm. I would say. Yep, we're just not dressed for this. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe grabbed a tip or two from the cabinet handle episode that was fun and we'll be back soon with another video hopefully doing some of this work i'm excited to get the barn uh sealed up because the colder it gets the harder it's going to be to work out here so we'll see so i guess we're going to go in now so until next time take care bye Thirty-eight and a half degrees Three to, it's three, is that point six? Three point seven degrees Celsius.